unit circle, shall we? Because so often students say, okay, I get the trig in the triangles. I get the trig in the rotation on an xy axis. But then how does that transfer to the sine curve or the cosine curve or any sinusoidal curve? So if you think about doing a rotation like this and then walking as you rotate, of course, you end up with your, with your wave that you can then think of as a function, a trig function. So let's just do that for a sine. So we're going to try to graph the function y equals the sine of theta, or x. Doesn't really matter. Are we OK? Let's start with 0 degrees. So 0 degrees, I've rotated 0 degrees. I'm doing the sine, so I'm looking for the y value. And that's 0. So 0 degrees has a sine of 0. 45 degrees has a sine of square root of 2 over 2. 90 degrees has a sine of 1. 1. So I'm actually bringing the heights over, right? That's a great suggestion, Mr. Haas. Uh, 135 degrees rotation has a sine of the square root of 2 over 2. Wow. If I've rotated 180 degrees, that has a sine of 0 again. If I'm rotating 100, uh, sorry, 225 degrees, that has a sine of negative square root of 2 over 2. 270 degrees rotation, so I'm going down here, that has a sine of negative 1. Again, I'm just looking at the y value, right? I'm a little too low, but we can get the idea. Sine of 200 and, sorry, of 335, no, 315 degrees, right? 315 degrees. Sine is your y, so negative square root of 2 over 2 again. And all the way around to 360 degrees, back to a sine of 0. And there's my sine curve. Up and down and up. And now just keep on going in both directions. And voila, we have unraveled the circle and created a beautiful trig function. So let's unravel this unit circuit.